Hey everybody, this is going to be the second video in a short series about these Gamewell M69 pull stations. So if you've already watched the video where I unboxed all of these from their original factory boxes and uh, kind of took a look at what actually shipped with these from the factory back in uh, the early 80s when they were released, uh, welcome back. If you haven't seen that video yet and that sounds interesting, eh, maybe check it out sometime. But anyways, in this video, we're mainly going to focus on going over some of the technical aspects of these pull stations, including both the uh, more uncommon key reset and just the standard version we might be more used to seeing. And uh, we'll kind of take them apart, operate them a couple times, see what's all inside, and see how they work. And uh, I'll say that the operation of the key reset one is the most interesting because it's really not what you'd expect for a key reset station. So um, what I'll go ahead and do is we'll focus on these two units that I've pulled out in front and let's dive in and start to take a look. All right, so one of the interesting things about this uh, family of pull stations is that to begin to even think about looking at the inside of them or opening them up, we actually have to go ahead and pull them first. So activating these uh, stations is remarkably simple. There's really only two parts to the whole thing in terms of moldings. You have the uh, back housing here, and then this whole front handle assembly is all one piece. So to activate the station, we're just gonna grip the handle in the kind of cutout here, and we're gonna pull it straight down out of the housing. You can see it pops down here and latches in place. So let's set that here. Activating the key reset variant is exactly the same. You can see they uh, have a bit of a different set of graphics on this version with the pull down located directly in that uh, kind of indentation in the handle, which makes it a little bit easier to figure out. But again, we're just going to reach in there and pull the entire front of the station down kind of out the bottom of the housing. And you can see just like the standard version, the key reset version also latches in place. You can start to see some of the labeling on the inside. We'll go into a little bit more detail on what's in there in just a second when I open these up. I'll just mention while we have a pretty good view of it right now, if either of these stations uh, had been equipped with the optional uh, general alarm switch, that switch would be located right in this cutout right here. And you can see how on a two-stage system, once somebody's activated the station, um, somebody like a uh, facilities worker, or one of the managers um, at the building would be able to come by with the general alarm switch and activate the second stage of the alarm. So anyways, let's go ahead and reset these. I'll start with the standard version um, that you may have seen before. These are kind of interesting in that you just insert a um, small screwdriver directly through this hole in the front. And what we're going to do is actually push down on the switch on the inside, which will free up the assembly and allow the handle to slide completely out of the housing. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll see if I can do this while keeping it within the camera frame. So we're going to push down on that switch on the inside. And we're going to pull the whole thing out of the housing. So you can see it actually comes apart into two different pieces. And so then I'll pause here for a second with this so that we can view some of the markings on the inside. I'll go ahead and do the entire reset procedure um, with the key reset variant. So for the key reset, we actually still need to... Uh, use the screwdriver. If you insert and turn the key, you don't get any movement at all out of the station. You still have to move that, uh, the cam or the, um, I'm not sure what you'd call it, but I'll, I'll just show it to you on the inside of the, uh, the station. You have to move part of the um, lock assembly out of the way before you can insert this screwdriver. And then after that point, the reset procedure is exactly the same. Just push that switch back and slide the front of the station completely out. 
So what I was trying to describe is on the back here, you can see, oops, we have the um, hole for the screwdriver to come through. So you can see when we're inserting the screwdriver, this is basically coming clean through the front of the housing. When the key's in the normal position, it's blocking that access hole into the station. So you're not able to actually depress the button on the inside. So at this point in the reset procedure, we can actually remove the key entirely. We're done with it. You can see on the inside of the station here, this is the uh, switch that we were depressing with the uh, screwdriver. To finish the reset process, we're just gonna slide the uh, handle back through the top of the housing. We're gonna push it down until we hear it click into place. And there we go. All right, so while we still have this one open, the insides of both these stations are essentially the same. The one difference is just that you might have noticed when I had the key reset version open, we had dash four written here on the model number label. Uh, but you can see on the label that there is the uh, number of the data sheet. There's the number of the wiring diagram, and I'll show you that in a second because this actually ships with these pull stations in a little informational pamphlet they give you. You can see that this station was manufactured on May 22nd of 1985, and this is just the standard M69 model number. You can see where it says top general alarm. This is what I began to mention just with this cutout here uh, for the additional uh, key switch. You can see that um, it's mentioning a gasket with the part number listed there that allow you to use this outside. That's interesting. I don't remember seeing that in the manual. And of course we have the UL listing on it. If we look at the back, we see the back of the switch and the flying leads for hooking it up uh, to the rest of the alarm system. And we'd see the same things if we spin the key reset variant around here. I'll show you that. So let's go ahead and finish resetting this station. Just like the other one, we're basically just gonna pop that handle pretty forcefully back into the housing of the station. And so there it is. There's the pull and reset procedure uh, for these stations and kind of in the middle of doing that, you got to see some of the inner workings of the station. Again, it was pretty quick because there's really not a lot to see. It's, it's a pretty simple reset procedure. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna grab one of the um, pamphlets that ships with these stations and we'll kind of look through some of the other variants of this device that supposedly existed uh, based on what that manual states. All right, so here's the little pamphlet that you get with these stations. I mentioned the uh, number of the wiring diagram when I showed you the inside of the pull stations. That's what appears here on the back. Um, so you can see the different wiring configurations for stations like the ones I have, where it's just the, the standard variant and the Dash 4 variant. You just have the one normally open switch. You can see here, we have the wiring for the general alarm variant. Um, down here, it looks like there was a variant of the pull station with an auxiliary contact. And then well, with this one, you kind of get everything. You get the uh, normal switch, the auxiliary contacts, uh, and the general alarm switch. So that's pretty cool. If we come back to the front here, I really love this statement on the front. It's written in such layman terms. The M69 series Century non-code station is basically a switch. Well, they're right. Which is held in the normal supervisory position by the extruded aluminum actuator front. And you can see here that we have a picture of the station. What I think is interesting is that this photo shows one of the standard variants and you can see that the graphics are a little bit different and what they show on the, the manual there. However, if we look at the key reset variant, well, it's essentially the same. So that's kind of neat. Let's open it up. So let's look first at operation and resetting. You can see here that they describe the uh, procedure that I showed you where 
to operate the station, you basically pull down on that recessed portion uh, of the actuator handle, and then it locks into position. I mentioned to you that general alarm switch. You can see in this photo here, they show the key inserted into a station that's uh, equipped with the uh, general alarm contact. To reset the station, uh, you see that you uh, can either insert a reset tool that they must have uh, sold at one point, or use a small rod such as the screwdriver uh, that I showed you. It uh, depresses the switch plunger, which slides out of the way and allows the handle to come out of the uh, station frame. And in these photos, you just see the uh, handle being reinserted into the frame, like I showed. Here they discuss the optional key reset, um, and essentially they just describe the fact that you need to move the uh, little tab on the back of the key out of the way to allow the uh, reset tool to reach the switch, which is exactly what we saw. And here again they talk about the general alarm key switch, um, which like we saw, it's, you can't see it and you can't access it until the station's been pulled. Here's something we have not seen yet. They at one point sold a cover assembly for this station, which would turn this into a dual action device. I think that's pretty cool. I'll look around and see if there's any other uh, documentation or examples of that out there on the internet. You can see that the uh, tabs that are located directly at the top of the station allow you to insert a brake rod. And if we look kind of at the top one of these, you can see the two tabs on each side, and then there's one little metal peg that sticks out of the front of the station. That's this locator right here, and that'll crack that brake rod in half. And we have some installation instructions. Uh, pretty standard, mounting it on a single gain box or a, a dual gain with a, a flush plate to flush mount it into the wall. So yeah, this is just kind of an overview of the pamphlet you get with these. I know there are uh, more complete versions of the data sheet and uh, operating manual available out there online, um, but I had personally never seen the, the little pamphlet -y version of it, so I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so that about wraps it up for what I have to say about these pull stations, at least with the technical details. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at these in a little bit more depth uh, than maybe what we've seen out there, especially for the key reset version. Um, if you guys have any questions about these stations or want to see anything other specific with them, uh, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, um, I guess we'll just have to see what I decide to do with these. Um, i definitely like to film some more videos of them actually in use. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you guys want to see specifically, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.